Okay, so this is going to be a session on uh, control chart. And uh, particularly the emphasis will be on understanding X bar R chart. So this is how a control chart will look like. Any control chart will have a center line, will have a line above the center line and will have a line below the center line. The line above the center line is called upper control limit and the line below the center line is called the lower control limit. If all the points in your control chart are inside the control limit, you can conclude that your process is under statistical control. The process is stable enough. Whatever you design, it is going as per the design. People are working as per the SOP and everything is you know, in order. And that's the time you will see all the points falling comfortably inside the control limit. But if you look at my graph, there is one point which is which has gone below lower control limit. It's a clear evidence that your process is you know influenced by an a special cause, and influenced by a special cause. So this process is considered out of control process. What to do under such situation? That is what we are going to understand, you know, from this particular module. So the usage of control chart number one, it helps you to monitor the stability of a process. How the you no know, stability is important while treating a patient by a doctor. Same way, when you are trying to improve a process, stability is important. If and only the process is stable, you should go for the improvement. If the process is not even stable, your goal should be to stabilize it. Don't think of you know, uh, producing better results. Rather, think of making your results consistent. That is your first job, right? So, control chart can help you to monitor the stability. And number two, control chart can help you understand the readiness for improvement, whether your process is ready for improvement or not. What is improvement? The next level of performance. If all the points are inside the control limit, it means the process is ready for improvement. If the points are not even falling inside the control limit, it simply means your process is out of your control. If something is out of your control, tell me how will you improve it? Right? It is something like you know you teaching to a set of students. When you are teaching to a set of students, it is important that you have good control over the students first. If you have good control over the students, then think about improving your lectures. That will serve the purpose. If students are not even under your control, but you are focusing on improving your lecture, it is going to be you know uh, your your initiative is going to be you know wasted so always you we can we think of improving a process only when it is under statistical control and then control chart can be used to visually demonstrate the improved performance your control chart for a characteristics before your project and same control chart for the same characteristics after your project you can visually convince your boss using a control chart right if the process is out of control you can see points are you know fluctuating heavily Points are going above control limit and below control limit and all those things will happen. But if you have really improved the process, if you have established a control plan, you will see all the points comfortably falling within the control limit. This is a clear evidence that your process has improved. You know, your, your project has really improved a process. So control chart can be used as a tool for you know, visual validation. All right. Now we are going to understand the difference between common cost variation and special cost variation. Imagine you are going to your office by a two-wheeler. You are going to your office by a two-wheeler. On an average, it takes 40 minutes for you to reach your office from your house, right? And I wanted to under I wanted to you know uh, monitor your uh, travel time. And for about uh, one week, I monitored your travel time. And the uh, first day, you took 40 minutes. Second day, you took 42 minutes. And it is like this. And now, I want to know why there is a variation. I want to know why there is a variation. Because you told me that on an average, you reach your office by 40 minutes. But you know, only one day, you reached in 40 minutes. Many of the day, slightly above 40 minutes and slightly below 40 minutes. When I ask you why there is a variation, do you think you will be able to answer me? You will definitely laugh at me. Sir, what is this? Plus or minus one, two minutes, you are seeking a, you are seeking a reason. That means 
if you can't explain the reason for the variation that you see in your data you must classify the variation as variation due to common cause you can classify the variation as variation due to common cause right hope it is clear to all of you common cause variation means one really cannot explain the reason for the variation but variation you will see in the numbers even after seeing the variation in the numbers you will not be able to explain the reason right next is next situation another day you reached office in just 25 minutes now i am asking you why did you how can you reach your office in you know just 25 minutes because on an average you said it take 40 minutes but now how come you know you reach office in 25 minutes do you think now you will have a reason to explain definitely yes now because that particular day it was uh, maybe you know some uh, holiday or a kind of uh, lockdown and only you are traveling on the road so road is very clear no traffic absolutely no disturbance so what you normally reach in 40 minutes today you are able to reach in 25 minutes and now the now the special cause is holiday or the lockdown so whenever your data points is far away from the average you will be able to explain the reason for the variation such variation are called special cause variation and now on another day on another day it took 55 minutes for you to reach the office now is it a common cause or a special cause it is definitely a special cause right because 55 is far away from the average which was 40 and now the reason is it there was a raining on the day so what is our understanding now what actually you know differentiates between common cause and special cause if you can't explain the reason for variation it is common cause variation but if you can explain the reason for variation it is special cause variation another day you took 1 hour 40 minutes to reach your office now when i ask you common cause or uh, whether the uh, source of uh, variation is common cause or special cause i'm sure all of you will now say special cause in my opinion it is very special for you because you have you have met your boyfriend or girlfriend on the way you decided to spend one hour in a coffee shop right and that's how your time you know become one hour 40 minutes right hope all of you understood now what is common cause variation and what is special cause variation if the number what you uh, what you, you know uh, observed is far away from the center value then it should be special cause if the number is close to the central value the average it is common cause all right so common cause you don't have to react because the reason for the variation you cannot explain if you can't even explain the reason for variation why do you worry about it but special cause you should be concerned because you could you know you could figure out the reason for the variation if you could figure out the reason for the variation why don't you fix it right so special cause you must react but common cause better not don't no need to react so this is common cause this is special cause this is special cause and this is very special for you so this this is uh, this i'm skipping not required yeah so there are two types of variation one is common cause variation a process that is operating with only chance cause of variation is said to be in statistical control a process that is operating in the presence of assignable cause is said to be an out of control process right and also common cause is sometimes called as uh, normal variation right common cause is sometimes called as normal variation some also known as random variation but special cause sometimes called abnormal sometimes called non random if only common cause variation exists then the process is under statistical control you will comfortably see all the points inside the control limit you know where the control limit will be control limit will be 3 sigma distance from the center right control limit will be 3 sigma distance from the center and all the points will be inside the control limit so that's how we differentiate between common cause and special cause so it is the stability which is more important for any business process if all the points are inside the control limit you can conclude the process is stable only when you ensure the process is stable you can improve the process it is like foundation of the building only when the foundation is strong then you can think about you know beautifying your building if the foundation itself is weak 
your focus should be on the foundation if stability itself is a problem immediately stop the process investigate and try to figure out the root cause so statistical process control is the first thing you all must do as a green belt or a black belt and you should focus on achieving the stability first once stability is achieved think about the capability look at the sigma level look at the yield look at the dpmo look at ppm look at the cpcbg look at the pppbg look at whatever and then try to improvise that is called process improvement process improvement happens only after ensuring process stability and that's this is this subject is called statistical process control and the tool used is control chart if the uh, if the process if process is in control you will see every point inside the control limit and the process improvement means the control limit the distance of the control limit if you can uh, reduce it the distance of the control limit from the center if you are able to reduce the distance of the control limit from the center that's an indication that you have improved the process one way one way of you know uh, visualizing the process improvement is you will see the control limit too close to the uh, center and another thing is if you look at the center line of your control chart the center line will fall exactly on the target so seeing the center line of the control chart on the target and seeing the control limits very close to the center line these are all indications that your process is improving that's how you need to use you now the control chart so this process whether it is improved or not you can measure the capability and one way of measuring the process capability is sigma level if the process control limits are too close to the center and if the center is on the target that will lead to a higher sigma level higher capability right so so a process which is under statistical control process is under statistical control now there are several options we'll have common cause variation random variation and uh, special cause or some also known as unassignable cause right and there is another option called all are correct if a process is under statistical control then then the process will only have random variation and random variation common cause variation unassignable cause of variation all of them are same so your option should be number 4 an out of control process out of control process means some points will be inside control limit some points will be outside control limit under such situation special cause variation exist common cause variation always exist so your options will be both common cause and assignable cause will be playing in a process which is statistically out of control so we can always improve a process which is statistically out of control no this is not true if the process is out of control don't think of improvement think of gaining the control if students are not listening to you don't think of improving your lecture make your students listen to you first right so ensure the statistical control first before going for improvement so this statement is false if a process is statistical statistically out of control what should be your immediate goal yes bring the gain the control spc should be your control and then you go for process improvement right so now we are going to plot a control chart and for that we need to have a data collection plan see this is a quality team uh, which collected data from a team the performance data the, the data can represent anything right and this particular thing is a manufacturing industry a product they manufactured and the product should have a length of 600 mm please note all that required is some data some data which is a critical to quality you can have lead time you can have the number of transaction you can have the number of failures or you can have anything that is you know critical to your quality but here it represents the length the length of the product is required to be 600 mm right and now the quality team collected data continuously for 5 days because they want to understand whether the process is you know really uh, good or bad process is going properly or not continuously 5 five days and every day the company is running for four shifts running for four shifts so for first shift they collected four data points not four five data points and similarly second shift to five data points third and fourth shift so every day they get 20 data points that means every day 
they collect data four times one in for shift number 1 one in shift number 2 one in shift number 3 one in shift number 4 that means there are four subgroups here first subgroup five data second subgroup five data third subgroup five data and fourth subgroup five data so here the subgroup size is 5 because every subgroup had five number of data so subgroup size is 5 number of subgroup per day is 4 and the study is conducted over 5 days so in total there are 20 subgroups with a subgroup size of 5 so totally you have 100 data with the 100 data you are going to understand whether your process is under control or not the result is already here see here i when i feed the data i will immediately get this uh, graph so this graph is telling me the first chart is here r chart first chart is r chart and this chart is x bar chart r chart is under control but look at my x bar chart x bar chart is out of control any one of the point is going out you must immediately conclude the process is out of control right so when the process is out of control what will i do is i will immediately stop the production i will immediately stop the production and see here this point is produced on eighth day so sorry eighth subgroup Eighth subgroup. Eighth subgroup was collected on day number two, fourth shift. Fourth shift, day number two. There is some problem with the five products. Five samples you have collected. With the five samples, you calculated the range. What is range? The difference between the maximum and minimum. But the range is under control. But what is out of control? The central tendency, the average calculated is out of control. So let's proceed and understand how the calculation goes. But don't worry about the calculation. We need to have, and the softwares will take care of it. And there are certain uh, steps to uh, plot the uh, control chart and to make the calculation. Don't worry about it. These are very very simple. And uh, there are about and some formulas are there to calculate the control limit, upper control limit, and the lower control limit for R chart as well as for X bar chart. right and uh, some constants involved see here our subgroup size is 5 for a subgroup size of 5 we need these three constant a2 d3 and d4 a2 is required for plotting your x bar chart d3 d4 are required for plotting your r chart and here you must plot the r chart first and then only you should plot x bar chart this logic is very important why it is that also i'll tell you see here the same data i have tabulated the same data i have tabulated so there are uh, 20 rows here right first subgroup x bar is calculated what is x bar average of the four data points so just sorry five add all these five numbers divide by five to get this this is x bar similarly range what is range maximum minus minimum what is maximum in your first row 601.6 is the maximum what is minimum 598 the difference is the range and that is what you are seeing here 3.6 similarly you do it for all 20 subgroups you will have 20 averages you will have 20 ranges now for the 20 average you calculate a grand average average of the averages that is called x double bar this x double bar is found to be 600.072 this 600.072 should be the center line in your x bar control chart clear similarly range you have one you calculate 20 ranges then calculate the average of the ranges that will be called r bar the r bar is found to be 2.72 you can the center line of your range chart will be this 2.72 now we have to plot the graph we have to actually calculate the control limit now you should plot the r chart see here r bar is 2.72 upper control limit is 5.751 what is the formula for upper control limit d4 into r bar d4 into r bar you remember d4 we picked up from the statistical uh, table d4 is 2.114 so 2.114 into your r bar r bar is how much 2.72 so 2.114 into 2.72 will give you upper control limit of 5.751 lower control limit will be d3 into r bar d3 is 0 so lower control limit will be 0 now you have center line which is you know uh, which is drawn through 2.72 you can see my green color line this is center line 
and upper control limit is 5.751 you can see you know close to 6 lower control limit is 0 so you have the center line you have the upper control limit you have the lower control limit what is this chart we are drawing the chart we are drawing is range chart now can you plot your ranges one by one how many ranges you have 20 ranges the first range is here second is here and so on all 20 ranges you are plotting and you are connecting the points one by one in the same sequence by a straight line right uh, take a scale and connect these two points and proceed continuously now you can see your control chart is ready now now you can see all your ranges are under the control limits that means your process is statistically under control i mean uh, your process range is statistically under under control the process range is known as within batch variation the process range is known as within batch variation during the interact interaction session we will we will talk about this you know within batch variation the within batch variation is under control when the within batch variation is under control you can proceed and plot the x bar chart because x bar chart will help you to understand the between batch variation so what is this within batch variation and what is this between batch variation we need to know thoroughly understand so the uh, the x bar chart center line is 600.072 the x double bar upper control limit is x double bar plus a2 into r bar what is a2 0.577 for a subgroup size of 5 a2 is 0.577 r bar is 2.72 right so x double bar plus r minus a2 into r bar will give you upper control limit and lower control limit now same method you plot the center line draw the center line upper control limit lower control limit your center line is ready upper control limit is ready lower control limit is ready now what is that you need to plot you need to plot the subgroup averages 20 subgroup you will have 20 subgroup averages plot them one by one first average second average third fourth and so on you plot everything now what are you supposed to do connect them by a straight line right and that's what i am doing now and now when you look at my graph what do you observe is this process stable process under control no because one of the point is one of the point is below the lower control limit so you must conclude that your process is out of control because the the point is far away from the center line how do i say far away it is or you know close i need a boundary in order to make conclusion right that boundary is this line if any point is going beyond the red color line control limit you must immediately conclude that you know this is special cause right special cause means a reason exist if a reason exist can why don't you find it find out and why don't you fix it right fix it and make sure you get all the points inside the control limit right so this x bar chart will help you to understand the between batch variation the between batch variation should also be under control the within batch variation should also be under control right so what is this between batch batch variation and what is this within batch variation what it means to you in your business you no know, we must have a clarity and thereby you know we can take appropriate actions so now in our case within batch variation was under control but what is out of control the between batch variation how do i know my average chart is going out of control so i have to stop the process find out why the point is going out why because this is the, you may think this is a single point then also i am advising you to stop the production advising you to stop the process because though it's a single point statistically it is an average it is average of five samples how can an average of five samples go beyond control limit that is my question to you now and moreover the five sample represents everything you have produced in that particular shift this is this is subgroup number 8 which means day number 2 shift number 4 this five sample are representative of the products you produced on shift number 4 day number 2 if the average of the five sample is going out of control it is warning you that everything that is produced on day 2 shift number 4 could have been wrong you should not dispatch them to your client because if you dispatch to your client then there could be more such problems 
so you must immediately stop first of all you must do an 100% inspection of all the item which you produced on day 2 shift number 4 why we are doing all these things because the between batch variation is out of control how you performed on shift number 3 shift number 2 shift number 1 is okay but how you performed on shift number 4 is not okay the between batch the between shift the between shift variation is monitored in x bar chart the within shift variation is monitored in r chart both have to be under control right if any one is out of control you must investigate and see here i am showing both the curves you know at a time and now you can clearly understand the r chart is under control that means the within batch variation is under control but what is not under control the between batch variation within batch is under control but between batch is out of control if between batch is out of control it simply means you know some of your clients are going to be in trouble some of your clients who will be receiving the outputs of uh, who will be receiving the outputs of uh, day number 2 shift number 8 may be in trouble right because that particular day there are a lot of problems right but another uh, another thing is Uh, uh, at the for the same uh, subgroup number eight, the range is. If you look at the range, range is under control. That means all the customers who will be receiving, you know, the output of your uh, uh, shift number four, day number two, are going to suffer. That is the meaning, right? But if the if the if the X bar chart is out of control, and the R chart is also out of control. then you know that creates you no know, further uh, uh, complex scenario so that is why in order to make uh, conclusions we have to make sure the r chart is under control then only we will plot the x bar chart if the r chart itself is out of control we we don't construct the x bar chart so always when you refer to the x bar chart it is important that your r chart is under control and so you can you can uh, draw meaningful conclusions so whatever i have explained or given it in the theory you can also read it out see here r chart must be in control to interpret the x bar chart right and uh, when the r chart itself is out of control it simply means the within shift variation itself is too high if within shift variation itself is too high there is no point of comparing first shift against second shift first you have a you know sop in place standardized every shift you have to produce you know in the same manner then only you can compare performance of one shift with the other shift if there is no sop there is no commonality and there is no point of comparing one shift with the other shift right so these are the formulas for x bar r chart x bar s chart imr chart when to use these charts x bar r chart you can use the x bar r chart if your subgroup size is 8 or less if the subgroup size is more than 8 you need to go for x bar s chart if the subgroup size is equal to 1 for example a destructive testing where you can destruct only one component not more then you know you go for imr chart imr chart and all these charts three charts you can use only for continuous data you know continuous data is measurable data length is a measurable data and so we have used right and so what is that we have learned so control chart can detect special causes it is used to monitor stability determine the readiness for improvement and control chart can also be used to visually demonstrate the improvement x bar r, r chart monitors the mean and variation of a process ctq in our case the ctq is length in your case it may be time it may be you know surface finish or it may be anything that matters to your customer or you and x bar r chart will work well when subgroup size is 8 or less the point falling outside the control limit indicates presence of a special cause and so your process deserves investigation if a special cause is detected the process must be stopped for detailed investigation right and if subgroup size is more than 8 you must use x bar s chart if subgroup size is equal to 1 like destructive testing you can consider imr chart and all these control charts can be effortlessly plotted using your uh, minitab software r chart must be always in control to interpret the x bar chart otherwise referring to the x bar chart has no meaning if when the r chart is under control you are sure that the out of control which you notice in the x bar chart is due to of targeting of the process you due to shifting of the process when r chart itself is not in control don't plot x bar chart that's my suggestion so the center line for average chart is x double bar and uh, the 
for the average shot upper upper control limit is x double bar plus a2 into r bar lower control limit is x double bar minus a2 into r bar similarly for the range chart the center line will be r bar and upper control limit will be d4 into r bar lower control limit will be d3 into r bar and don't worry d3 d4 a2 are statistical constants that depends on the subgroup size so i would like to stop here and then now you can open your questions